So, so it's all yours, Sarah. All right, let me go ahead and open up my PowerPoint and just make sure that you guys can see it. Okay, is that screen visible by, to all? Yes. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to tuck away the, my pictures. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, as Anita said, I, I have been involved with ANV. I guess I'm on my third year of being on the board of directors, and I blame this 100% on Cheryl Beaversdorf because she is the one who recruited me to be on the board. I uh, have worked with Wendy over the uh, before that um, as a falls prevention person. Some of you know me um, with my falls prevention work that I have been doing since um, coming to Marymount. I've been at Marymount for five years, which is hard for me to believe. Um, you know, I went back and got my PhD sort of later in life. And uh, when people were asking me, why would you do such a crazy thing at this point in your life? I said, I don't know. It was always sort of something I wanted to do. Never thought I would become a professor yet, but here I am. So you never know how, what, how life is going to take you. Most of my career uh, before Mary Mount was spent in local public health. I managed, um, I was in a health department sort of in the Southwest corner of Ohio. Um, if you draw a triangle between, if you know anything about Ohio, if you drew a triangle from Cincinnati to Columbus to Dayton, uh, I worked sort of right in the middle of that triangle in a small health department, uh, Greene County. Um, but I was actually living in Cincinnati at the time. So did a lot of driving, um, but really enjoyed my time there. So I've managed lots of different health promotion, wellness projects. Um, before I was at the local health department, I also did some work in hospital-based community-based um, health promotion and wellness. Uh, one of the few people, my husband always jokes, he says, I'm one of the few people that actually has spent my entire career in what I went to, went to college for. Um, but I've always been drawn to um, health promotion and wellness. And that's really how I got here today. When I started at Marymount, I was hired to work on the Falls Prevention Grant that Marymount had received about nine months prior to bringing me on board. Um, it's a great fit for my um, exercise physiology background as just well as as well as my just overall um, commitment personally and professionally to health promotion and wellness. <clears throat> uh, also, just some great news that we got last week at Marymount is that we uh, were refunded for our falls prevention work. Uh, we got refunded for another four years, um, $550,000 grant. Um, so You'll probably hear or see me in the future talking about falls prevention again, of course, um, but very pleased to be here. Um, and of course, I'm not a dermatologist. And so, um, you know, I'm hoping that today's presentation is sort of a review and a reminder um, about some of the things that we want to think about when we think about taking care of our skin. Um, but of course, I will not be able to answer any medical related questions. Um, and I'm sure all of you can appreciate that. Um, I know a lot of you hopefully um, are seeing a dermatologist on a regular basis. So let's get started. What we're gonna talk about today, uh, what are the most common skin related issues that we face as we get older? Um, and of course, uh, one of those is skin cancer. So I do have some slides, done some research on um, different types of skin cancer and how skin cancer can be prevented and detected. And then what are some things that we can do to keep our skin um, healthy as we age? Uh, the weather, what's happening outside? Well, I, I wouldn't say the weather's getting warmer. It was getting warmer, right? And then it took a little bit of a turn for the, to the cold. Um, but of course, with nicer weather and warmer weather, we do spend more time outdoors. Um, and so it, I think it is a great time to just review and remind ourselves of what we can do to keep our skin uh, healthy. So what is our skin? Our skin, I think in the um, description of today's session, it talked about how skin is our largest organ, and it is. Um, and here's just a diagram that I found that shows um, what is all involved in skin, right? We just think of the skin as the skin that we see, right? But the skin actually has lots of things going on. Um, and as we get older, um, our skin, I'm just going to minimize this button over here. Uh, the skin becomes thinner. 
um, that layer of adipose tissue um, thins out. Uh, we know that um, our veins and our bones can be seen more easily through our skin as our skin does become um, thinner. Uh, we might become more prone to scratches, cuts, or bumps, and those items um, sometimes take longer to heal. And also just years of um, being outside, um, perhaps spending too much time in the sun. Uh, I know that when I was a kid, uh, we used to slather on that, um, not, I guess it was coconut oil, it smelled like coconuts, right? Slather on that oil and you're going to sit out in the sun. Um, and it was probably when I was, you know, um, well, 70s and 80s, I think is when it really started. Um, and you guys all remember that when we really started thinking about um, the damage that the sun can do to our body, to our, to our skin. And so years of sun tanning and being out in the sun um, also contributes to a lot of the issues that we now have. Uh, what are some of the other things that our skin does, right? Our skin has lots of um, functions. Um, it helps protect us, right? It helps protect us. It serves as a barrier to um, foreign agents. Um, it helps to keep us warm and helps to keep us cooler in the summer. Um, so it, it has a role in heat regulation. Um, it helps to protect us from if we touch something that's hot, right? We have sensors in our skin. We have nerves. You can see uh, here in the diagram where that yellow nerve is. And so when we touch something that's really hot, right, that sensation in our skin, those nerves tell us to quick move your hand away, right? So um, our skin has lots of different functions. Um, it tells us when things are too hot or too cold. Um, also can alert us to things that are causing pain. Um, and so uh, the skin has lots of um, very important functions, um, helps with sweat, um, evaporation, respiration, um, lots of different, uh, lots of different functions uh, for our skin. So this picture um, I just threw in, it's sort of, you know, we talk about what happens to our skin as we age. We talk about um, perhaps losing some of the um, fat layers or the fatty cells that are in our hypodermis. Um, also that layer of dermis, which is where um, the elastin and collagen are, um, those deplete over time as well. And then, so you can see the top layer of skin, that cuticle and the epidermis, which are the most um, so the closest to the surface of our skin, um, you can see how over time uh, with aging skin, those are wrinkles that you see. Um, and again, due to those decreased fat cells and also the decrease in elastin and collagen over time. So what are the common skin conditions that we see as we get older? Uh, dry, itchy skin, bruises, wrinkles, skin tags and age spots and skin cancer. So these are the things we're gonna spend a few minutes talking about. Um, of course, I'll spend more time talking about skin cancer than these other conditions um, as, it, as it is probably the most important. So dry and itchy skin. Uh, what causes dry, itchy skin? Uh, lots of different things can cause it. Um, perhaps not staying hydrated enough. Um, or spending too much time in the sun. Um, I'll just say now it's not gonna come as a surprise to anyone that uh, you're gonna hear me mention the sun probably on every slide moving forward. Um, being in very dry air, um, smoking. If you smoke or you're around a smoker, you're exposed to secondhand smoke, uh, that can cause um, your skin to be dry. Feeling stress. Um, stress has a lot of negative um, consequences, um, but high levels of stress can also cause um, skin irritation. <clears throat> Losing sweat or oil glands, which is a common with old age or as we get older, um, we just have less um, production of sweat and oil glands in our skin. Using too much soap or perfume and taking hot baths. We know that hot water also depletes some of the natural oils that are on the surface of the skin. So how can we help to prevent dry or itchy skin? Uh, using moisturizers every day. And um, there are lots of over-the-counter moisturizers that you can choose from. Um, getting a recommendation from a healthcare provider um, is what I would recommend, particularly if you have sensitive skin um, and might have um, you know, reactions to some of the perfumes or other things that are added to some of the moisturizers on the market. So taking fewer or shorter uh, baths or showers, 
um, can help, right? Because again, it's that water, um, particularly hot water that can strip your skin of its natural oils. Using a milder soap, uh, using warmer water instead of hot water. Um, it's not generally recommended if you're taking um, a bath that you add bath oil to the water um, because that, you know, putting my false prevention hat back on um, can actually make the tub and the floor of your bathroom too slippery. So um, we don't generally recommend that, um, that you add oil to a tub. Using a re room humidifier, um, that really helps a lot, not only for your skin, but a lot of people you know, benefit from um, a room humidifier for breathing and allergies. Um, so you know, if, if you feel like that's something that your house really feels dry, um, you can either use a room humidifier, some people can, can um, benefit from a whole house humidifier. Wearing rubber gloves when doing housework um, or perhaps washing dishes, doing any other type of cleaning, um, sort of protecting your skin from any of those harsh chemicals that might be in cleaners. Um, and of course, seeking medical advice if, if you have a dry, itchy skin and it just becomes um, you know, too much, it's really starting to you know, interact, interfere with your life, um, it becomes painful or starts to bleed. Um, in addition, right, it's, it's, as the weather warms up, we might be spending time in our gardens. And so wearing um, gardening gloves to help protect your skin, um, and of course, gloves in cold weather also, because um, cold weather, that harsh cold weather is also going to affect your skin and can, can cause it to dry out. Probably if I asked you guys, you guys would have some suggestions as well. So maybe at the end, we can, we can share some ideas on how to help or prevent uh, dry and itchy skin. Bruises and wrinkles. Uh, as we get older, uh, a lot of us bruise more easily. Um, and it takes longer time to heal from certain bruises. Uh, we know that some um, illnesses or diseases and medications can cause an increase in bleeding or bruising. And that's something that um, hopefully you would know about um, listed as a side effect if you are taking a new medication or something that could cause um, increased in bleeding. Um, of course, we always recommend talking to a healthcare provider if you, um, you know, if you start to notice that you're getting more bruises um, or your bruises seem um, deeper or darker, or if you don't know how you got a bruise, right? If you, if you notice you have a bruise and you're like, oh, you know, I really don't know how I got that bruise, or if that happens more frequently, uh, it's definitely something that you would want to um, check out with your, with a, with a healthcare provider. And so it, it's all related to that thinner skin, um, that decreased fatty layer in your skin, which can really help as a cushion, right? Serve as a cushion. Um, and so as that decreases over time, um, it, it does make sense that, that we might bruise more easily. Uh, but again, thinking about um, if you don't know how you got a particular bruise, or if you seem to be bruising more frequently than you used to, that's something that you would want to get checked out. Take a quick sip of uh, sip of water. And of course, everybody's favorite thing to talk about are wrinkles. Um, you know, wrinkles, I like to remind people, wrinkles are normal, normal part of healthy aging um, it, it are wrinkles, right? Uh, we know that they develop over time. Um, frequent exposure to the sun and other ultraviolet light really have an impact on wrinkles. Uh, but also gravity, right? We can't really do anything about gravity, unfortunately, um, just like we can't do anything about our age. Um, and so, you know, uh, well, I'm not going to go into the, the whole spiel about, you know, trying to accept our wrinkles as we get older, but um, they are a normal part of aging. Certainly smoking um, increases our risk, um, having less fat and elasticity in our skin, which again is a normal part of aging. Uh, what can we do about wrinkles, right? As you guys know, right? Trying to prevent or fix or reverse wrinkles is, is a big, big um, uh, area in our country. We spend billions. That's what I was going for, right? We spend billions on trying to reduce or eliminate our wrinkles. Um, there are some creams and oils that can help the appearance, um, either on a daily or a long-term basis. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these treatments, um, either they don't work, they don't work very well, or they certainly don't work for long term. Um, there are some resurfacing um, techniques and things that we can do, peels, dermabrasion, um, you guys have all heard of um, Botox and other fillers. 
Um, some of those things, you know, even um, surgery or facelifts, right? Um, some of those things have um, some side effects, including scarring um, and bruising. Um, some of them can be painful. Um, so again, you know, while wrinkles are normal, um, if you feel, um, you know, that you have more wrinkles than you should, or you really do want to try to do something about them from, from an appearance standpoint, um, then that's something to talk to a healthcare provider about as well. Okay, uh, two more things we see uh, more frequently as we get older. And again, I pulled this picture of the sun. Um, skin tags, right? What are skin tags? They're um, small, usually flesh colored, little growths of skin um, raised from the surface of our skin. Uh, they do become more common as we get older. Um, they are more common in women. And they're most often found on areas of our skin where there are folds such as the neck um, or the armpit. Um, the chest and the groin. Um, the good news is they are harmless. Uh, if they are bothering you, um, it is recommended that you do not remove them yourself and that you have a healthcare provider um, remove them. There are some over-the-counter um, things that you can do for skin tags as well, but if, if those aren't successful or you really do feel like you have enough that you want to get um, some treatment, then certainly that would be recommended. And then age spots. Age spots used to be called liver spots, but they are flat brown spots, um, generally considered to be caused by, again, years in the sun or right? spending too much time in the sun. Um, age spots are larger than freckles and they commonly show up on the areas like your face, hands, arms, back or feet. Um, using a broad spectrum sunscreen, and that's the sunscreen that's going to contain both, that prevents both UVA and UVA Bs from rays getting through um, are the best ways to prevent age spots. Um, like, H, H, uh, like skin tags, age spots are harmless, um, although they can um, sometimes become irritated. So again, recommending talking to your doctor if you have um, either of these and, you, you know, and they're bothering you. Right. If they're not bothering you, um, they're not harmful. But if they are bothering you, it's certainly something to um, talk to a healthcare provider about. So now let's move over and talk about um, skin cancer for a few slides. And actually, what I'd like to do is, is I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. If I can, I was going to pull up the poll. Just pause with me here for a moment. I guess I'm going to wait. Maybe we'll do that at the end. Okay. Um, skin cancer. Um, I think I knew this several years ago, but I guess I was a little bit surprised um, that skin cancer remains the most common type of cancer, not only in the United States, but in the world. Um, the main cause of skin cancer is the sun. Um, sun lamps and, and tanning booths can also cause skin cancer. Um, people of any skin color um, can get skin cancer. Um, certainly people with fair skin um, that freckle easily are at a greater risk. Um, and it can be cured. And most, and, um, we'll talk about this in, a, in a, one of the future slides, just talking about early detection um, and how skin cancer um, is highly curable if detected early. So I added this screenshot as I was doing some research um, I was really amazed. I'm always amazed at the amount of, of data that you can really find um, on various websites and including the um, CDC website. They have um, a melanoma dashboard, which um, you can get into. And if you're interested in the topic or want to find out some more information about it, lots of um, amazing data, really drilling down to granular level um, on data. But um, just wanted to put that out there in case anyone, you know, after today's talk, anyone is like, oh, and I do have a family history of that, or if you want to learn a little bit more about that, um, CDC has some wonderful resources, including um, this melanoma dashboard. So what are the three most common types of cancer? They are basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma. Um, these two um, types grow slowly, and they rarely spread to other parts of the body. Um, they're generally found on the parts of the skin that are most often exposed to the sun. Um, and as you can imagine, that would be your head, neck, face, hands, and arms. But of course, they can um, happen anywhere on your body. So something to keep in mind. 
The third and most dangerous type of skin cancer is melanoma. Um, while it is more rare than the other types, um, it, it's more dangerous, as I said, and it can easily spread to other organs. A couple of stats that I found on melanoma, um, the five-year survival rate um, is about 94% for melan all melanomas. Um, with early detection, uh, the, the survival rate um, is close to 99%. So uh, we really harp on um, that early detection when it comes to looking for um, skin cancers. Um, in 2023, it's estimated that there will be um, 186,680 cases of melanoma, new cases of melanoma diagnosed in the United States, and just a little bit under, say, 7,990 deaths from melanoma in 2023. Um, again, vast majority caused by the sun, uh, with early detection being the key to um, a high survival rate with melanoma. After age 50, um, melanoma is, is much more common in men than in women. You have a two times greater risk of developing melanoma if you've had at least five or more sunburns over the course of your lifetime. Um, and of course, if we wear um, regular sunscreen with an SPF of at least 15, we'll talk a little bit more about sunscreen in a few minutes, um, you can decrease that risk by about 50% by wearing um, sunscreen on a regular basis. Um, so again, about 6 million people are treated for some sort of skin cancer every year in the United States. Um, $9 billion spent on healthcare treatment in the United States every year. Um, and this slide says about 8,000 people die from melanoma each year. That's from the CDC. And I think that might the quote I said a minute ago was 7,990. So at least my data is matching up between these two slides. Uh, and I have the source here on the bottom of this slide. Um, most of my statistics um, I did get from the CDC's website. So who's at a higher risk for developing skin cancer? On the right side of the slide, you can see these are the things that put you at a higher risk, although certainly everyone is at risk. Um, if you have fairer or lighter natural skin color, if you have skin that burns, freckles, reddens easily, um, or becomes painful when you're out in the sun, having blue or green eyes, blonde or red hair, uh, certain types and large number of moles. Um, so if you have a lot of moles, that puts you at a high risk. If you have a family history of skin cancer, personal history of skin cancer, um, and, and age. And we know that as we get older, um, that also increases our risk. So how do we check for skin cancer? Um, perhaps you have seen this. I know uh, I've seen in physician offices, they have one of those um, cards that you can take home and it has pictures um, of various things that you can check for when you're checking for skin cancer. Um, sometimes you might need a friend or family member to help you, right? We can't all see what's on our back, for example, unless you have a set of mirrors that you can use. Uh, but checking regularly and then, of course, um, also uh, making sure that you're seeing a healthcare provider and or a dermatologist on a regular basis. Um, but we talk about the A, B, C, D, E's of checking for skin cancer. And again, these are things that you should do. It would be recommended that you do uh, perhaps monthly. Um, looking at your moles or birthmarks. Um, a is for asymmetry, right, where half of the growth looks different than the other half. So if you can imagine... Uh, looking at, at a mole or some other um, growth that's on your body, sort of dividing it in half with a line visually, right? Um, do the two halves look the same or do they look different? And if they look different, um, then that puts you at a higher risk and it's something that you would want to get checked out, right? Borders that are irregular, right? So if the border, and certainly if it changes or if the border is smooth on one side and, and jagged or you know not smooth on the other side, um, that perhaps um, puts you at a higher risk. Color, um, if the color changes over time. And again, right, that's not something you might notice unless you're checking on a regular basis. Um, diameter, if the diameter is greater than the size of a pencil eraser, um, that's something to think about or have looked at. And evolving, right, meaning there is change. So any change in the size, shape, symptoms, perhaps itchiness or tenderness, 
um, or the surface, particularly if something bleeds, <clears throat> or just a change in the shade or color. Um, these are all things that you want to look for on a regular basis and get to a healthcare provider if you notice any of these things. So preventing skin cancer, what are some things that we can do? There's lots of things, you guys know this. Um, find my list here. Seeking shade, that kind of makes sense, right? I've mentioned now many times that the sun is the biggest culprit for um, some of these issues with our skin. And of course, particularly with um, age spots or skin cancer. So staying in the shade. Avoid being outdoors between 10 and three when the sun is at its highest and hottest and most um, intense. Wearing sun protective clothing, such as clothing that has a UPF built in, um, a wide brimmed hat, wearing sunglasses, neck coverings, right? If we're out working in our garden, we're doing something outside and you have a hat on. Um, if it's wide brimmed, which is what we would want, that's gonna give you some additional protection around your neck and shoulders. But if not, uh, wearing um, some sort of a neck covering. Um, if you use a self tanning lotion, which a lot of people do, um, you still need to use a sunscreen. Um, so keeping that in mind, if you're using um, a self tanning lotion, um, and as we get into the, as we approach our summer, right, make remembering that, uh, both the water and the sun, as well as the snow that we didn't have any snow this year, but those are all, um, things that reflect the sun. So imagine if you're walking on a beach right? That sun is reflecting, the sand is reflecting sun back at you. And also if you're near the, the water, uh, the water is also reflecting sun um, back up at you. So um, you might notice if you just go for a walk along the beach, right? And you get back and you realize that your sun was, your face goes really sunburned. Um, could have been because the sun reflecting off the water and hitting your face and you're really getting the sun twice, but you're getting it from above and you're getting it from below as well. Um, remembering to apply sunscreen um, after swimming or any other activities that result in heavy perspiration. Maybe you're out uh, playing bocce or pickleball and you put some sunscreen on and you've been out there for a couple of hours. Um, you might need to reapply. Uh, so even, if, even if you have uh, water resistant sunscreen, you still need to reapply. Um, and then reapplying throughout the day, as I said, particularly if you're outside for many hours. Um, so examining uh, the slide we just looked at. Um, examining your moles or freckles for changes um, that could happen over time, right? Looking at things at least once a month. Um, it's generally thought that about 80 to 85% of um, aging, um, some of these aging things that happen to our skin are due to the exposure to the sun. Um, so keeping that in mind. All right. Um, I've got a source here, American Academy of Dermatology is where I got some of this information as well. And I've got all of my um, sources are on the last slide. So there's an infographic that I found, um, spotskincancer.org. Um, some of this is kind of a review, uh, but making sure that if we say yes to sun protection, right, and we're saying no to skin cancer, um, choose a sunscreen that has an SPF of 30 or higher. Um, is water resistant if you can and provides broad spectrum coverage, which again is the both UVA and UVB rays. Um, applying before you go outdoors. I'm generally recommended that you put sunscreen on about 15 minutes before you're going to be outside. Making sure you use enough sunscreen and that you put it on all parts of your body that are going to be exposed, um, applying it to all of your bare skin. And then reapplying, certainly if you've been in a pool or the, or the water, uh, reapplying your sunscreen as soon as you get out, or if you've been, um, as I said, playing. Doing some sort of physical activity outside, you may need to reapply. Um, so this is just an infographic, um, sort of reinforcing what we've been talking about, seeking shade or wearing sun protective clothing, um, as well as sunscreen. Another great infographic I found, this was at the National Institute of Aging, Skin Care and Aging. Uh, 
it's kind of just a summary of what we've talked about today. Um, and again, as I said at the beginning of my talk, I hope none of this was brand new information, uh, but I hope it was a reminder, um, especially as our weather is getting warmer and we're starting to spend more time outdoors. Uh, but that is to wear um, sunscreen and other protective clothing, sunglasses, wide brim hat, um, even just wearing long sleeves, right, instead of short sleeves um, can help protect us from the sun. Staying hydrated and eating a healthy diet. Of course, these are, these are some of our lifestyle factors that um, not only affect our skin, but, you know, can affect um, our risk and management of other chronic diseases as well. Managing your stress. We talk about exercising, um, you know, spending some time perhaps meditating, uh, but whatever works for you in terms of helping to manage your stress, um, that can um, greatly improve um, your, the appearance of your skin. Not smoking and not being exposed to secondhand smoke. Uh, using moisturizers or lotions or ointments as prescribed or as recommended by a healthcare provider. And then of course, most importantly, checking your skin often um, for any changes, especially to moles or freckles. Um, and seeing a healthcare provider or dermatologist on a regular basis. Again, summarizing uh, what we talked about today. And that was my last slide. Uh, I've got my contact information here and also some references and resources. Um, I don't know if you guys normally make the slides available, but I'd be happy to provide them as a, as a PDF um, if anybody was interested in them. Um, and then again, these are the main sources that I used for my presentation today. Yeah, if you can send those to the office, they can make them available to anybody Great. that asked for them. I <laughs> will do that. So we have a, a number of questions and comments. Um, we can just go through them. Great. So hang on a second here. We'll see how many of them I can answer. <laughs> well, the, the first one was a dermatologist recommendation that we should be putting lotion on our hands more often than washing them. So it's just something to be aware of. Well, I will say that no matter anywhere I go, I always have my little tube of my CVS Healthy Hands Lotion because my hands get dry and I have a tube in my purse, on my desk and in the car. <laughs> So that's a great a, tip. A shout out for the sale program. So you've got at least one uh, enthusiastic participant <laughs> in the audience today. And I also, everyone in my family knows, <laughs> I do not wash a single dish without my rubber gloves on. <laughs> a comment here that uh, this person's had several screens for skin cancer, and it seems like every doctor uses a different technique what should we expect in a screening? Um, I think, you know, generally the a screening should include sort of a, a health history and the person should certainly ask about any family history that you have. Um, and then it's going to include a full body examination and that, you know, that's, they have to look at every inch of your body um, and look for things. And again, they're going to also be monitoring for things over time. Uh, I think these days, a lot of physicians, uh, a lot of dermatologists actually take photos, right? So that they can compare photos over time. Um, and with digital health records, that makes it easy, easy to do. So certainly that health history is very important. Um, you know, looking at other, your medications, other chronic diseases that you might have. Um, and then it's really just that physical examination of, of your body. A comment here, uh, they forget the name of the condition, but it causes the skin to become piebald looking. Does that ring a bell? Can you speak to that at all? No, I would not be able to speak to that. I'm not sure what that means. You talked about uh, sunscreen of SPF 30 or above. Uh, is there a significant <laughs> increase when you go above that? And to expand on that, is there a point of diminishing returns? Yeah, I've read a lot about that, just, just you know, from my own curiosity over the years. Um, so that SPF stands for, um, that's the number of minutes that um, that sunscreen that you're using will protect you from until you start to burn. So an SPF of 30 
uh, will generally protect your skin for about 30 minutes, uh, which is why we talk about still protecting yourself from the, the sun, still seeking shade, still perhaps wearing clothing, um, because we don't want to burn. Remember, um, every sunburn that we get increases our risk. Um, I've heard people say going above 50 doesn't really do anything. I think there's, um, well, I don't think I know that there's various schools of thought on that. I think the most important thing is reapplying every couple of hours. Um, and, it, you know, I think when I go to the beach, I use 50. I don't know, maybe it's just some things, you know, maybe it's like the placebo effect. I think if I'm wearing 50, I have more protection than if I'm wearing 30, but certainly reapplying every couple of hours and then not just, and then most of us are not doing this, just, you know, flat out sitting in the sun. Um, so yeah, there's different schools of thought on is, is 100, right? You see 100, you wanna, oh, I'm gonna get the 100 versus the 50 versus the 30. Um, it really is that number represents the number of minutes until your skin starts to burn. Is it safe to use sunscreen every day? Because you know, you're putting chemicals on your skin. I know I've read articles where people are concerned about what's getting into your blood bloodstream from the sunscreens that you're applying. Mm -hmm. um, it's my understanding and knowledge that sunscreens are generally considered safe. I think there are some people who have some, um, you know, if you have really sensitive skin or some sensitivities to certain um, chemicals or components of sunscreen, that's something that you might need to be aware of. I know there are brands of sunscreen. Of course, they tend to be a little bit more expensive um, that have fewer of some of those chemicals that might irritate your skin. It might be a matter of trying some different sunscreens and seeing which ones, um, you know, are more irritated to your skin than others. But they've sunscreens are evaluated um, by the FDA, um, and so I think generally they're considered safe. Um, certainly, washing your skin on a regular basis and exfoliating um, does help to get rid of any residue that might be on your skin, um, and it is considered safe to wear sunscreen every day. Does sunscreen prevent your body from making vitamin D? And how do you manage those competing issues? Um, it's funny. I did. I, re I read something about that. And the answer is no, your body will still produce vitamin D and some of the other minerals that come from sunlight. Um, I will say that, um, and I know my own healthcare provider shared with me that um, most people, um, do even if they spend time out in the sun, do still need to take a vitamin D supplement. That's something that you know your healthcare provider would be able to uh, decide for you, um, because we just don't spend enough time outside um, to get enough sunlight to produce the vitamin D that we need on a daily basis. Um, so while we can still do that from the sun, um, a lot of people still do need to take a vitamin D supplement. You talked about age spots earlier. What products do you can you recommend that would erase or diminish the look of those? And are there specific ingredients to look for if you're looking for a product like that? I will say I, I don't consider myself an expert in the, this area. Um, as we all know, the 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 skin cream market is booming. Um, with the number of products um, that are on the market. Um, and we hear about different, um, you know, retinol and um, different collagen. Um, I think that would just, that would be a question I would take to a healthcare provider. Um, you know, certainly there's lots of different things you can try on the market. Certainly you could spend a lot of money um, going through various creams and ointments and oils and trying to uh, make your skin look better. Uh, that is something I would direct towards a a healthcare provider. So what works well for one person might not work well for the next person. Yeah, and I'll, I'll point out to people that there are a couple of <clears throat> recommendations for uh, dermatologists that people are using that have been put in the chat. So if you're looking for one, you might take note of those. What are the survey results? Let's see. I share results. So I am not at risk for skin cancer. Most people said false. I think everybody is at risk for skin cancer. 
Uh, I wear sunscreen every single day. Um, more people said no than yes. Um, certainly, you know, you think if you don't, you think it's winter, you think it's cloudy. Um, I don't think I mentioned that. I did have that in my notes, but just reminding people that um, even when it's cloudy, uh, we can still get damage from the sun, even in the winter. Um, so even if it's a cloudy day, we don't think you're gonna be outside very long. Um, it is recommended that you use a sunscreen, um, at least on your face, as you are gonna be outside, you know, perhaps for at least a few minutes here and there, running your errands, doing your normal daily activities. Um, so yes, it is recommended that you wear it every day. Cheryl's posted a link from uh, her Aging Matters podcast about skin. Oh, condition. great. So, yes, that would be a great compliment to go and listen to that podcast. Is it recommended to use sunscreen uh, until it gets dark out? Meaning, do you need sunscreen at nighttime? I would well, I, I think they're saying, you know, if it's getting late in the day, is it less of a concern? Uh, is it less of a concern? I would say yes. I would also just recommend if you're going to be outside during daylight time that you have sunscreen on. But certainly remember I mentioned that time period of 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. when the sun is strongest. That's definitely the time when you would want to either stay inside, seek shade, and and or make sure you have sunscreen on. Yeah, 10 to three. Comment here that uh, this person's dermatologist just laughed when they showed him a product that purported to reduce <laughs> age spots. So, you know. And we hear, I mean, you guys oh, use ads in magazines. We are bombarded with uh, marketing for these types of, of creams. And I think you addressed this already, but the question is, yeah. does sun reflected on water, like in a pool, increase the risk of sun damage? Yes. Yes, it does. You know, people think um, that you can't even get sun damage through a window in your car, but I don't know if anyone's ever driven on a, gone on a car trip and you had your arm on the windowsill, but the window was up, but your arm still got burnt. Uh, that has happened to me. So um, yeah, it will reflect off of water. It will reflect off of sand. It will reflect off of snow um, and can even pass through glass. Yeah, the other point I'd make about reflected sunlight is you can get a sunburn on you know, parts of your body you don't normally think of as getting exposed, like you know, beneath your chin or mm -hmm. the bottoms of your ears. I remember yeah. on a ski trip once, I actually got sunburned inside my nostrils from sunlight oh coming God. off the snow and not a pleasant prospect, so. Mm. I was surprised when I went to my um, dermatologist last summer or at the end of last summer and I had a tan from being in the pool all summer and I really expected to get yelled at about that and she didn't, but it was fine. And she said, the thing you wanted to look for is to make sure that your tan lines disappeared completely by, I think, April, she said. You want, as long as your tan lines go away, your skin is doing okay. It's rejuvenating. I've never heard that. I'll have to keep that in mind. I like, that's good. I was, I was very surprised because, as I said, I yeah. get yelled at. Right. We hear of the healthy tan, right? That's one of the things the skin cancer people don't want to hear you say the word healthy tan. There's, they say that there's nothing healthy about a tan, but I'm, I'm a sun person myself. So I, I understand the whole tan line thing. And, and I, I do like that advice. Uh, comment here. One component in moisturizers and creams that really seems to make a difference is shea butter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that I I have found that to be the case as well. Um, that's great stuff. A question here. What I'm about not Botox? saying it, I'm not I'm not going to comment about Botox. <laughs> Another uh, comment here that uh, the skin cancers that they've had on their face were on the left side, 
facing the window while driving. So, you yeah. know, just backs up your comment. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think, uh, Sarah, this has really been informative and helpful, even though several of us uh, do see um, dermatologists regularly. This that little poll was kind of instructive. I guess it's a reminder that even all of us who know about some of these issues don't put on that sunscreen every day. And mm -hmm. we really need to 365 days a year, whatever the weather. And Correct. I think there's big and a huge boom in um, hats. Yeah. <laughs> and there are attractive hats. There's useful hats. There's hats that don't blow off in the wind. There's hats that have ventilation built in. Mm -hmm. There's hats for every size of head and style. So there really is, everybody looks good in a hat. Just <laughs> fine. <laughs> and uh, we'll finish up with one more remark that uh, one person really likes um, moisturizers that contain mm. menthol, gold mm. bond, extra strength. Um, and that makes you feel good. I don't know if that adds, adds any medicinal effect to the skin care. We got a comment that there are moisturizers mm -hmm. out there <clears throat> that have sunscreen included in them. So, you know, two birds with one stone. Yeah, a lot of the day moisturizers these days do have at least a 15 SPF. And then there's also the reverse, which is a sunscreen that has tint in it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can sort of mm -hmm. give yourself a, a color. Yep. Well, since we have uh, a few minutes here, I'm just going to wrap up by saying again, Gary, maybe we should stop the um, and uh, stop recording and just wrap up with some ANV things, which reminds people on Friday there is not the excursion.